This video is intended for Milton Union High School physics students as a quick review of some of the things we talked about in courses if they missed that very important day. Um, what we're interested in in this particular video is just some standard definitions of everyday forces and the symbols and we are interested in learning how to draw and do some simple math with free body diagrams. Kicking things off, everyday forces. We're going to define some. Uh, force of gravity, which is defined as the weight of something. We can abbreviate that as F sub G. We could also abbreviate that as W for weight. And there is a formula that defines weight. Weight is equal to the mass of an object times G, where G is our standard uh, negative 9.81 meters per square second, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Pushes and pulls. We could label those many different ways. Some people call these applied forces, and so one that I failed to put on here was that some people call it FAPP for applied force, but we could just as easily call it F1, F2, whatever, FA, FB. We could say it's the force from the girl. We could be very specific. If it's a boat pushing on somebody, we could call it the force of the boat on the boy, and we'd be very specific about our labels. So these are all pushes and pulls of things. Normal force. Definition of a normal force is that it's a force that's acting perpendicular to a surface. And we abbreviate a normal force as F sub N. And sometimes I'll use capital N for normal force. You will also see it abbreviated in some textbooks in some places as just capital letter N, I believe. Uh, which I hate because uh, capital letter N is the force uh, unit, which is the Newton. So I prefer F sub N myself, and I won't be using capital letter N. Uh, the trick word here is this perpendicular, and when we start doing our free body diagrams, we will see the differences. Next up, force of friction. Force of friction is abbreviated F sub F, and there is a formula associated with this. This is the case of sliding friction. Uh, we'll get when we talk about friction we'll get more in depth on this but force of friction is this symbol right here is the Greek letter mu and this is mu k which stands for the kinetic coefficient of friction or the coefficient of friction or the coefficient of kinetic friction however you want to say it and you see it's multiplied by F sub n which was our normal force up above Okay, so it's a relationship. When we do fiction, we'll talk more about that, but you'll see me abbreviate it here at the beginning as F sub F, um, and then we'll replace it with the formula mu k F n. Lastly, tensions, oops, sorry, tensions are abbreviated uh, usually as T for tensions. Uh, we talked about above here, number two, pushes and pulls. Well, you can only have pulls in ropes. You can't push rope. Uh, it just gets weaker, so we usually abbreviate these forces in ropes as T for tension. So now that you got some idea of what these abbreviations are, we can quickly go through and we can take a look at some particular motions on here. When I draw my free body diagrams, uh, I like to be somewhat artistic in it. I like to draw exactly what's happening, and we're going to do basic boxes sliding or sitting on floors. So we have a floor and we have a box sitting on it, and this is a flat surface, no motion, what are the forces acting on it? Well, forces we generally s tend to say act from the center of mass. And so one force you can always say is acting on something, and it's acting down, is called force of gravity, which we can call Fg. We could also label it as W. And you'll see me labeling it most of the times, instead of all of that, I'll just simply label it as mg because that is the expression that we use for the weight of an object. So I'll write mg most of the time. So if something is sitting on a horizontal surface, if that was the only force uh, working on it, it'd be moving down. So the surface, the surface right here is applying a force on that object that's pushing up. And you notice this force is perpendicular to the surface. This is a 90 degree angle. That force then is the normal force. Fn. And here we got the forces acting on something that's simply sitting on a flat surface. Now we can do some math with this. And the math we're talking about 
is called summing forces. Um, this is the uh, Greek letter sigma, and sigma stands for sum. It's just the fancy way of saying we're going to add some stuff up, and we say we're going to sum the forces, and we've got to be specific about the direction that we're summing forces in. In this particular case, the normal force and the weight are acting in the y direction. There are no forces acting in the x direction, so we say sum of the forces in the y direction. This right here is just a label of what we are doing, and so we're saying the sum of the forces is equal to what? Well, by convention, as you've been taught, we're going to use up as positive and down as negative, and so we say normal force up and now down forces are negative and this gets to be a key minus mg now what we're doing here is we know that g is equal to negative 9.81 and this minus sign is this minus sign right there so when you actually plug g in we're going to plug g in as a positive 9.81 because we have a new method for determining the sign on that and that's by taking the subtraction remember this Sigma says add them up well, we are adding them up but we're just adding them up now by subtracting because I know G is acting down and it's a down force so in forces we treat our G's as positives now we have an expression here this has to equal something if there is no motion that means there's no acceleration and the sum of the forces is equal to zero so what we're saying here if I solve this then we're saying that the normal force add the mg over to the other side those two forces are equal and opposite of each other all right that makes some sense it's not moving so the two forces have to be equal piece of cake right all right next one flat surface it's moving to the right the reason it's moving to the right is we have some force that's pushing to the right no friction involved sitting here on the table we have normal force acting up we have the weight acting down remember weight is mg and I have some kind of force pushing it or pulling it to the right now I'm not being specific about what's going on here so I could draw my force like this and I'm just gonna label it F1 and I could draw it like that perfectly and that is a force acting to the right pushing it to the right I could also draw my arrow acting on the object pulling it to the right and still call it F1 both of those drawings are the same thing because the forces are acting on the block and it's causing a motion to the right well now we have motions in the X and Y direction so when we go to sum these things up we say we have the sum of the forces in and let's do X direction first well the only force we have acting in the X direction is F1 and that has to equal one of two things the sum of the forces is always equal to mass times acceleration or the sum of the forces is always equal to zero it's equal to zero when the acceleration is zero so in this particular case I know it's moving to the right it doesn't say that the acceleration is zero so I'm going to assume that it is not zero and so I'm going to simply call it is equal to ma here as soon as I get my marker back and we can be very direct the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration in the x direction sum of the forces in the y direction what forces do I have in the y direction I have the normal force acting up I have mg acting down so I minus mg because it's a down force and it's not moving in the y direction so we could say mass times acceleration in the y direction however in this case the acceleration in the y direction since it's not moving there is no acceleration and the acceleration is equal to zero we could just call that entire thing zero right here which is the standard way when you know something is not accelerating in that direction you just say it's equal to zero just like we did in the first one next scenario we have a flat surface moving right this time we have friction on it what forces is act are acting on this uh, now I'll show you sometimes I don't always draw my forces acting from the center which you probably always should but I'll draw it like this just because I'm prone to do that from time to time normal force acting up 
mg acting down. And the reason I don't draw it from the center of mass is sometimes I write information inside the box, like the mass of the box is 10 kilograms. And so that'll gunk everything up for me. So as long as we know what's going on, we're okay. That was a pretty lousy G I drew over there, so we'll write that better. Mg. What other forces do we have? Well, it says it's moving to the right. So I'm going to draw my arrow like this this time. I'm pushing on this box with a force, and I can label it anything I want to. So I'm going to label it force A, pushing it to the right. Now this time, this has friction with it. And we got to think, well, if we're pushing the box to the right, which direction is friction acting on us? And friction must be acting to the left, because frictional forces oppose the motion, and we call that F sub F. Now I realize I wish I wouldn't have drawn my force A on the left side like I did. I wish I would have put it over here on the right side, but such is life. And now I got a picture like this. Summing forces. Oops. Force in the x direction. Some of the forces in the x direction. Well, what forces do I have? I'm going to go my positive forces first. So my positive force is F A minus going to the left is my force of friction. And that's going to equal my mass times my acceleration in the x direction. And if I knew the mass of the box and I knew some information about the forces, I could figure out what the acceleration is. Um, the acceleration could also be zero. If the acceleration is zero, there's two things going on. Either the box is moving at a constant velocity or the box is stationary. But I um, don't know that yet, so we'll just set it up in the default. Some of the forces in the y direction. Well, I have the normal force. We've done this now for the third time. Minus mg. We know it's not accelerating or moving in the y direction, so the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Flat surfaces taken care of. I'm going to stop this video production, and we'll call this part one, and we'll have a part two version of this in uh, updated on YouTube soon. Thank you.